Well, welcome to Coffee with Vern, a time where we enjoy conversation with each other of the truth of scripture, theological truth, and then once a month, we will cover a question segment from your questions sent in to coffeewithvern at gmail.com. Boker Tove. Good morning. Oh. Jesse, did you just hit your head <laughs> on the microphone? It's one of those days. Well, good morning to you and good afternoon and good evening, brother. How are you over there? Are you okay? I'm good, yeah. Just I was adjusting my microphone. You're knocking some sense into yourself. Apparently. So it sounds like. Yeah. Wow. Oh, man, that describes the feel of the day already. <laughs> it's gloomy outside. It's like, it's not even raining yet. It's just like that mist junk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It makes everything wet. You got to use like, your windshield wipers when you don't really need to. Like during creation? Yeah. 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 Hey, that's some theology. I'm, oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I'd have to touch back up on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just one of those kind of days. Like my brain ain't all there today. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was up till twelve thirty last night trying to buy books. Yeah, I was about to say people are gonna be like, "Man, what was he doing laboring until twelve thirty? My man James was laboring over the text. No, <laughs> he was trying to figure out a gift card. I was laboring over a gift card. <laughs> that's what I was laboring over, dude. I I'm telling you, why do I even try? I get on. ReformationHeritageBooks.com, right? Yeah. Reformation Day sale still going on. I'm like, thank you, God. Get a lot of books in my cart. I had a gift card, pretty big gift card to use. And I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to use it for. So I get seven books in there, $112 worth of books. It's like seven or eight books. That's a lot of books. Okay, let's think about it for a minute. Sweet. Go to checkout, put the gift card in. Sorry, excess denied. I'm like, okay. So I take it out. I'm like, maybe it has to be right at 100. Take the one book out. We're at 100. Access denied. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, hey, Janice, it's 11 o'clock. Janice, <laughs> she's in the living room watching Hallmark Channel. Janice. Oh, no. I need you to call this number. Interrupting the Hallmark movie. Oh, yeah. And she's yeah, like, but you you in technology, let's <laughs> be honest, you're like an 80-year-old man. God, that's wrong, man. <laughs> so I, well, You're like, Jesse, yeah, my you? email won't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I save this file? Yeah. This how do I drop an image into Word? I don't know how. Dude, I feel like an eight-year-old man. They, okay, look, North Greenville didn't teach me anything about finances or computers. Okay, I just yeah. know how to read, <laughs> and read and write. Which just thank God I know how to do that. But I call her. I'm like, I need you to call this number. She's like, Why don't you call the number? I said, No, I need you to call the number. Oh man! So she called the number. And they're like, you got to give it an hour and it'll reset and you can do it. So I set an alarm for 1230 so I could get up and order my books. Oh, my word. And then it worked. So I ordered my <laughs> books at 1230 at night. Oh. What a night. So I don't know, man. I'm not all there today. I'm just like, Ooh. So we're going to have an interesting day. We're going to have another. Oh, my god! If you're like, you know, I'm just not in the mood for hearing your voices. Now would be the time to turn off uh, the channel. We, you know, last week we said, we'll have a lighthearted conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you started talking about death. I brought the book today, though. I actually have it today. Yeah. And that's not lighthearted at all. <laughs> that was ironic. Yeah. Uh, and you were talking about Pilgrim's Progress. I mean, you know, so is that any better? Well, no, probably not. But yeah. it wasn't. What's yeah. the name of yours? Remember Death? Remember Death. Oh, yeah. by the way, I said the wrong name a thousand times it's by Matthew McCulloch. Yeah. Which, if you watch the video, we we were able to fix, but <laughs> not if you don't watch not the if video. You listen Matthew only. McCauley, remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I'm sure everybody listening just was rushing to go buy that book. Oh, dude, I'm I understand if you you were just like, man, I can't get on quick enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to read that book now, right now. No, <laughs> I, I mean, hey, that's how I am, but you know, I'm a different kind of breed, anyways. Yeah. But, well, today we're going to just kind of have a lighthearted conversation. Why? Let's talk about it. Yeah. So some of our special guests, <laughs> we maybe we forget when we plan these things, people have lives. Yeah. And, and schedules. Well, yeah. You so know, we don't, I don't think we plan all that much in advance, <laughs> which I think to us, we justify. We're like, well, that makes it more genuine. And yeah. for everybody else, they're like, oh, my word, would you guys please. Please let me know weeks plan. in advance. <laughs> I'm like, you know. How about today? Like today, I met with Jesse Holmes. So I'm like, so you want to come on coffee with Vern today? He's like, 
next week. I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, you sure? I gave you an hour's notice. I How mean, much more do you need? What else do you need? I mean. Okay, but we did have something. We did have uh, somebody else planned for today, and they were going to come, yeah. but it fell through. So, so don't let's not think that we let's only not asked. throw ourselves to the wolves quite yet. Yes, you know, we we did actually we worked plan. last week. We did work towards getting yeah. those people, and it's in. nobody's fault that no work it happened, happen. schedules happen. Yeah, but we are we will have an episode come out Thanksgiving week. Yes, absolutely. And it will be a pre-recorded one, but we'll have it come out, and that will be yeah. with our good friend, Jamie. Right. Uh, David Nalling. Nalling. David Nalling. Uh, it's Black... So, because of Black Friday and COVID, you know, it's like Black Friday month. It's like Black Month in November is yeah. what it's become. Oh, yeah. So, he said at Home COVID. Depot, he is just swamped. Yeah. But he's going to find a time to come in, so we're going to get him in, and then we're getting Jesse Holmes in next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to get our people in. Doesn't Dr. B call him David Nollins? Dr. B... David Nolly. Oh. Brother Brother Nolly. I can't do his impersonation. I can't. No. It's that Louisiana accent, man. It's so beautiful, but I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Brother Nolly. There it is, yeah. <laughs> for a little bit. I tried. Get Malone tried. in. Where is Malone? When we need him. Man. I don't, I don't know, man. Does Malone just not want to hang out with us anymore? Malone. He's so good. He probably listens and thinks, well, they don't invite me. And I'm like, well, Malone, we do it at the same time every week. Just come on. Except we're here 30 minutes early today. A little bit. You know, we're trying to get ahead of schedule yep. today. Um, Man, it's seven minutes in and we have not talked about, about anything. anything. <laughs> That's most podcasts, though. Have you thought about that? No, it really is because Allison listens to these podcasts that she wants me to listen to and I try. Um, you know, she likes them. Yeah. But I listen to them and I'm like, they're not talking about anything. I don't want to listen to them anymore. And yeah. she'll, she'll probably be like, yes, they are. This is important it stuff. Speaks to my soul. <laughs> yeah, it no. does. Yeah, I can't like the the ones that are like two hours. What's that guy? Jeff Rogan is that his name? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. His like they're like three hours. Sometimes like I'm good. I'm good, bro. I got life to live actually. But ours is just thirty minutes. So you yeah, know, if you can just sit and deal with us for thirty minutes, praise God. Yeah. I guess we'll start conversating a little bit. You know, we're eight minutes in now, so why not? You eight, know, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Well. Let's let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's going on in our lives then. And what I mean, we're still reading some of the same books. Yeah. Um Thanksgiving's around the corner. That's yeah. terrifying when you really think about it. Think about this. When we hit February, like we will have been going through COVID for about a year. February to March. Yeah. yeah terrifying. Um, I was thinking about that yesterday as I was walking upstairs. I was like, I I'm sad that this will be a year come March that we've had to deal with this. Yeah. And, you know, I I think we're learning to, I think we're learning to live and adjust with it. I get that. It's still just frustrating because like still there's things that we can't do. You know, like I can't have the kids sit together still. We're still wearing masks in the youth, things like that, that, you know, youth are all about community and connection and relationship. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a strain on youth, like to not be able to, you know, hug each other, dap each other up, sit next to each other and like, Hey, check this out. Check this out. You yeah. Know? I mean, I mean, I want them paying attention, but it is rough to see these kids just spread across the NPC when you're teaching, when they're used to being in these little clusters. Yeah. I mean, some of your kids, when you tell them to separate, they put their chairs an inch from each other. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then you have always. to correct it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, what's, what's crazy. I'm is just that you like, have to correct that. Yeah, and, and I'm thankful that, you know, this came out of COVID. We would have never had this. Absolutely. So there's been there's been some highs and some lows, but Yeah. I mean, you know, we've it's it's difficult cuz we've all heard the I don't ever want 2020 to come again. I don't I want to hurry up and get out 2020 and you know, there are parts of that I agree with, but 2020 was hard, but there's a lot of good stuff that came out of Spiritually, it. Spiritually, would we be where we are if it wasn't right. for it? Well, see, through 2020, through the quarantine, through all this other stuff, I was forced to confront some things that were hard. Mm-hmm. And it, it like, boosted my walk and my growth. And yeah. I wouldn't trade that for anything. Dude, I wouldn't trade where I'm at walking with the Lord right, it, it, for anything, honestly. Like, you know, I... When I took this job back in May for the interim, you know, I, I would hit the ground running, but man, I feel, you know, like I'm in a groove now. 
Like I, when I study the word to teach, I get excited in a, 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 f- a way that is refreshing. Yeah. Um, through 2020, I've had a lot of time to develop things, um, learn how to read different ways to study the word more oh, yeah. effectively to my heart. And I wouldn't trade those sweet moments and relationships that have gotten and ha- that have occurred through this. Yeah. Like I'm friends with some people that I probably wouldn't be friends with if it wasn't for COVID in 2020. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I, it's been me and you got closer through it because we oh, yeah. we were up here every, every day. single day. <laughs> I'm like, you go in, you know, when, when yeah. they were like, hey, you can work from home if you need to, things yeah. like that, because we were trying to be careful. Jesse, are you going in tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be yeah, there. Okay, be I'm there. coming. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, no, so I'm coming. Oh, man. So it's been good, but. Yeah. I, I mean, and it, and it goes back to what we've been talking about, right? I mean, um, through the uncomfortable nature of this whole season and the hardships, that's when you see growth most of the time is through oh. hardships. And what was it I, I read to you through um, in Pilgrim's Progress the other day? The bitter must come before the sweet. Oh, you're just tickling my soul. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I I feel like I feel like COVID was it, it was a springboard, a jumping off point for a lot of people's mm-hmm. spiritual walk and stuff like that. Which it was well, for me. It was. I'll tell you there, or it it could have should have been. It was a, it was a springboard, or either it was a cliff fall. Right. Like I have not seen a lot of people just stay stagnant. I've either right. seen you a either lot of people grow spiritually or they just backwards. Went, yeah. You know, and I, I think this, this kind of sums it up. This, uh, I'll talk a little bit about kind of some of the stuff we're doing in the youth and you can share some stuff that we've got going on. Maybe this for this episode, this will be just a good, if you, if you don't know what we do back here, this will be good for you to hear. Uh, and then students, a, a fresh reminder, but maybe this will encourage someone today. This book, The Valley of Vision, mm. by it's edited by Arthur Bennett, but it's Puritan Prayers. And I'm going to talk about why I think it's so important. Let me talk about that first because I'll forget. Uh, so yesterday I was looking, you know, for books to buy. Yeah. It's bad when James Always. has an hour and a half to two hours after work when I'm sitting at home. Like Monday nights, because of the time change, I can't go ride anymore because when I get off. So I, I was on my computer doing some homework, and then I was like, I'm going to shop for some books. Spent two hours looking at books, 100%. Yeah, there you go. And I was the Gospel Coalition, this is really cool for you readers out there, they have this article that they did for a couple of years of uh, what's on your shelf or something like that, and they asked people like Matt Chandler, J.D. Greer, mm. Russell Moore, J.I. Packer, um, and some of my favorites like Kevin DeYoung, yeah. Ligon Duncan, all your big boys. Oh, and, you Puritan people. Dude. Oh, yeah. And a lot of them said the same book, The Valley yeah. of Vision, stays on their nightstand. So they went, what's on your nightstand? Meaning, what do you read every day? What do you read every year? What's on your shelf? What are you reading right now? Different kind of questions. And this, like out of 10 that it looked up, probably 50% to 60%. Wow. Which I'm, I think that speaks to a lot. Yeah. Because this is second to the word of God. This is my favorite text to read. Uh, but the introductory prayer, I read it for the students last week in Ecclesia, was, Lord, high, holy, meek, and lowly, from gentle and lowly, Matthew mm-hmm. 11. There you go. Thou hast brought me to the valley of vision, where I live in the depths, but see thee in the heights. Hemmed in by mountains of sin, I behold thy glory. Yeah. And I think that kind of sums up where we've been at times, is that in the valley is where we've seen a lot of vision. You know, in 2020, has been tough. Uh, pastors spoke on this Sunday. Like, a lot of people have grown spiritually from this. And it should have been a time where spiritually you just flourished. Yeah. And we talked about during when we were recording some of these first episodes. If you didn't, start now. Yeah. Right? It's not too late. It's you know, late. start now. That's right. Uh, you've Until the Lord calls you home, right. you've got an opportunity to start working in your process of sanctification more effectively. Right. And so... Um, I think for 2020 though, for people like for some of us, especially this was a valley, but man, did we see some vision? Yeah. Right. Because dude, I had just came on full-time staff January, March, we shut down. I had two months of just being on Mm full-time, which I mean, interim, I was working full-time, but this was like, this is the job. I'm here for a hot minute. I'm not moving. Uh, a lot of things kind of changed with that. We had D now yeah. two weeks later, closed doors. Yeah. 
And so it was like, Lord, I've been on this mountaintop for two months. And then you just said, you know what? Down you go, brother. (laughs) But in that valley, I'm telling you, dude, there's been some vision. I have, I have seen the Lord's hand work. We have seen through his word so much truth that is so applicable and relevant to right now. And so I think that, hey, this is a great book if you need an encouragement, the Valley of Visions, the Valley of Vision. But man, yeah, in the valleys where we find a vision, I think you would say the same thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, and sometimes it's tough, right? Because that's where a lot of work gets done and a lot of the work is yeah. hard. Like, have you seen the Skit Guys video about the... Oh, man, I don't know what it's I used called. to watch this all the time. Yeah, me too. Well, it was about the sculptor, right? And it was talking about how God yes, I know chisels exactly. away, yes. you know, all the imperfections to get to the final. To the masterpiece. To the master, yeah. masterpiece. At, but it hurts when mm-hmm. he chisels those imperfections yeah. away. Yeah. It's, a fi- it's like the, the, the call. The refiner. The, <laughs> the refiner's fire. The uh, crucible. What is yeah, the crucible yeah, yeah. for? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to burn away impurities mm-hmm. yep. mm, in the fire, dude. Yeah, and, and that and that's really what 2020 has been for me. It's been, you know, through all this, God gave us a lot of vision for what mm-hmm. he wanted ministry to be here. And as well in my personal life, there was a lot of chiseling going on. Yeah. You know, and it hurt. It was hurtful and painful, and I I came through it, Um, you know, closer to the masterpiece that he wants me to. I feel like you, you came through stronger, there. man. Yeah. You know, I was still, we, me and mom were talking about it. You know, me and you have, I, I you definitely, I would say my best friend. Um, you know, I, I've got, a, I don't know who watches some people, like, but I used to know your best friend, <laughs> but like within the Augusta area, there's three people that I, I know I can always call that are in Augusta. And that's you, Aiden and Jesse Holmes. Mm-hmm. And I believe that about our staff, but you, we, we come from the same way of life growing up here. And so it's a different kind of connection, but man, I mean, even though I haven't been a part of your life for the last couple of years, I feel like I've seen you grow. Yeah. I, I mean, that. dude, you, I told my mom, I said, I know what I'm getting Jesse for Christmas. <laughs> I said, he is falling into me. Oh, He's man. turning into me. He likes books. I mean, I, I've always liked books, but like now it's like, that's what I want to do, bro. I, I just want to sit and I want to read. When I, you know, because your computer, when it's editing something, you can't do anything. And I see you reading that book. I'm just like, that's my boy. <laughs> that's my boy. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's. I've seen you grow. I, I know. I've seen myself grow. Um, I've seen my mom and my dad grow spiritually through this time. Like it is so encouraging when I wake up and I see my dad studying the word of God in his office. I'm going yeah. back to my study to study. Yeah. Um, and, and my mom as well, you know, my mom has always been a studier like me, but like last she's turning into me. It's scary. Last <laughs> night, it's almost like we reversed roles. And I think this is hilarious because I'm back there looking for two hours at books. I'm like, mom, Hey mom, come here. <laughs> Look at this book. Do you want it? And she's like, I'm studying. What? And I'm like, Okay, oh. Janice, you're turning into me. Because, oh. that, dude, that's me in the mornings. Yeah. It's like Brody comes in, my nephew. Eh, eh. Uh, hey, Uncle Vern, where you at? That's what mom's saying. Eh, yeah. and this bro, eh. And I'm like, yo, I'm reading. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Janice, you're turning into me. So I, I've seen, and that's a f- funny example, but, man, uh, I've seen some growth. I've seen some yeah. growth in some of my students. Yeah. And I'm not going to say any because man, I, I don't need the emails. So, well, my child's growing too, James. Yeah. Uh, don't email me. Okay. Don't email me in the words <laughs> of Matt Chandler. I, he said that a couple of weeks ago about died. Oh man. But yeah. Well, um, no, what was this? He stared at the paper and he said, this next section of my notes, I know can get me some emails. It's going to get me some email. <laughs> and he said, but you know what? Whatever. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go said, into you it. You know what? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, that is, I love that. I um, that is do you talk about boldness yeah um what how much time are we at i know 20 okay we got time we got time all right so anyways let's turn the page and talk a little bit i got this random picture here yeah you do i want to talk about this picture and let's see let's see if jesse can see it can you see it see yeah okay so this is me and dr melton all right dr melton and for any of my professors if they listen i don't know if they do i really hope they do it's me. It's a selfie of me and Dr. Melton at graduation. It's pretty epic if you ask me. Yeah. Um, 
But there are a couple of professors at North Greenville that, holy cow, honestly, the whole Christian studies department, I can't single one out. The whole Christian studies department, I pray y'all watch this, but thank God for what y'all did in my life. I don't know where I would be without you all. But Dr. Melton, I'll never forget when I took his class. I was terrified to take his class, right? My advisor, uh, Dr. Johnson, is like, you should take it. It's a good class. It's a 1,000 level class. It would get you some credits you need and it would fill this part of your major. And I'm like, mm. it's like, dude, I heard he's like excruciating. Uh -oh. I was like, I don't know. And I took it. I was taking Hebrew three at the time. I, I mean, I had a, no, I was taking Hebrew two. I had a workload. I had 18 and a half hours that semester which was yeah. a full load at North Greenville or 19 and a half, whatever it was at the time. And that picture I keep in my office next to my bookshelf. Well, it's actually on my shelf. I haven't hung up because, um, wow, if it wasn't for that man where I'd be. So let's talk a little bit. He's the one that introduced the Valley of Vision to me. Oh. So that's why I brought it in here. The first nice. day of class, he read it. He read the introductory prayer and I was like, This is phenomenal. First day of class, he said, if you don't mind, take a knee with me. We're all going to take a knee and we're going to pray for this class. My first test, I got 17 and a half on. You know what? <laughs> Laugh at me. I don't care. Hardest test I'd ever taken yeah. in my life. Ended up getting an A in the class because he rewarded effort. Oh, there you go. Made me work like a dog. But I'll never forget when he said, I say it all the time on this show, but I'll never forget how do you know you're called to the ministry? You'll have an ever abounding joy and love for the work mm. of the ministry. Mm. Um, That'll preach. Yeah. Uh, give me the pulpit and I'll go to town with that quote right there. But that man's heart and soul for the people of God is something I've never seen in mm. any other man. Uh, he, so he didn't live in Greenville, right? He pastored a church that was about an hour or two away, I think. And he had like a home at one of the spots where he would stay during the week. I, it was, I'm I can't remember the whole story, but traveled cause he loved the church. Um, and, uh, just passionate about his congregation, his flock, right. passionate about people. Why I want to talk about him just this morning though, is because that's the kind of man I want to be. And mm -hmm. for any of my students that are like, man, I want to, I want to know what it's like to study the word of God. I want to cherish that strive to be, um, or let's put it this way, strive after studying the word of God daily first, start yeah. there. Yeah. We got to start with getting in the word. Cause he always talked about, um, guys, yeah, y'all, you didn't do good on this test. You may not be able to tell me what that book says, but I'd rather, you know, what the word of God says. Cause we had memory verses that were tests. We had, it was always going back to that. He introduced the value of vision, introduced the Puritans to me. He had a love for the Puritans. And that's why I have all those Puritan paperbacks there. Um, to summarize why I have that picture there is it's a sweet memory. Yeah, man. I'm telling you on a day like today, which is a down day, you just got to remember people that influence your life. Yeah. And you know, out of 2020, I developed a lot of the things. I remembered a lot of the things that he taught me and I've tried to go back and just relive them. Um, and so the takeaway from Dr. Melton is this man, strive after the know the word of God, because mm -hmm. it's the greatest thing that you need in your life and for your soul. Um, and so let's turn the page from that. That picture is great. If you don't watch the show, sorry, you don't get to see me and Dr. Melton with a selfie. Yeah. He, this What's even funnier is he came up to me. He's like, James, get a selfie with me. I'm like, Dr. Melton. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, man. Um, he's I not the one. any of my professors oh, ever dude, having said that. It was that. awesome. He's not the one that said, thank God you're graduating. That's Dr. Mathis, which I love you, brother. Wow. I love you, brother. Um, I had some great professors, some hard professors, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, they taught me a lot. I learned a lot about wow. the Lord through them. So let's turn the page and let's end this conversation on this. So we're getting close to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. Yeah. Right. But as we kind of look back, we're getting close to Thanksgiving, uh, because these next couple of shows will be some interviews. We won't have a chance probably to talk about this with Thanksgiving. What's one thing I'm, I'm on the spot, Johnny on the spot right oh, here. You're good. What's, uh, what's one or maybe three. I'll give you three options. Wow. One to three things that you're thankful for from this year specifically. Oh, man. On the spot, bro. Okay. Well, I'm really thankful for... Man, this is going to be cheesy, but I'm, I mean it it's 150%. Okay. It's all right. I'm really thankful for Allison. Oh, um, you're such a good husband. <laughs> Lord, let me be like no, Jesse. Well, listen, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, yeah. it's marriage is work and it's tough work. And, mm. um, this year was, you know, like I said, it was a chiseling, yeah. chiseling year. And, um, man, I am, I am so very thankful for Allison. You so, got a good wife, man. Yes, I do. She, she's a sister to me. I love her to death. You bless, man. I am indeed. I, I totally agree with you. Look at that. <laughs> Is that your number one or do you have more? Let's well, see. my, my other one was that I'm, I'm very thankful for how God, um, worked in me through this season yeah. and how he's growing me and, um, just my passion for learning more about him and yeah. his word and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, mm, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thankfulness. Thanksgiving. I don't know. I got so much. I could, I could dude, I could go on a list. One to three. I know it's tough. Um, I mean, I, I'll go the cheesier out with you. I'm, I'm very thankful for Anna, you know, me and Anna are not married, but dude, it's, you know, she's a constant encouragement in my life. I don't know where I would be without her. If she calls me every night with, I, I call her every morning on my way to work. She calls me the minute she gets off from work. And then we talk every night before, uh, one of us goes to bed. Usually I watch TV and fall asleep on the couch. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, you know, and it's always encouraging, you know, I could have had the crappiest day ever. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if I shouldn't have said that on air. I could have had the worst day ever. Um, but she's going to be like, hey, it's okay. I love you. I'm here for you. I'm like, yeah. how, how do you do that? Like, yeah. you know? So I'm thankful for my Anna. I'm thankful for my family. Mm -hmm. uh, 100%. Um, mm -hmm. Through this, we got to hang out a lot. Me, mom, and dad during COVID. Dad was home a lot. Mom was at home. And so... We got really close, um, thankful because of, while I was away at school, didn't get that opportunity as much. And so it's been a lot of fun getting to hang out with them, watching them grow spiritually and just us get to do some fun things like play pool every day when I went home for lunch. It's awesome. Um, little things in life. And I'll say number three, I'm thankful for my students. You know, I, I'm thankful for my church, but I'm, I'm thankful for my students. Yeah. Right. You know, I would, I don't know what I would do without these kids. Uh, they are, it, it doesn't matter how bad my day is. They're the thing that keeps me going. Yeah. I wake up thinking about them. I go to bed thinking about them because I care about their hearts, their souls and their state of salvation. Um, you know, they, I don't think I, they, some of them been watching, some of them don't. So hopefully they'll watch <laughs> to end this out, but I don't think they understand quite how much they mean, uh, to me. Mm. I, I would, I mean, I would give my life for any one of them. Yeah. Um, and so to my students, man, you are loved, you are cherished. You don't know how happy you make this 24 year old student or I'm not a student, 24 year old guy. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you are in school. Yeah. It's kicking my butt right now. Yeah. That's another story. But, uh, man, those are three things because it was the hard, I've never, I felt like somebody had ripped part of yeah. my heart out when I couldn't see him for three months. It was yeah. awful. So, man, as we close out today, what a good conversation, lighthearted today. Look at that. It was. We actually had a lighthearted conversation. Can it you believe it? It wasn't a lie this week. <laughs> I, I mean, we didn't go on a theology rant, didn't talk about death. You know, we talked about thankfulness. Oh, man, that was so funny oh, when we man. realized we had done that. Well, next time we, we might talk about death. Who knows? Hey, next week, Jesse Holmes will be in house right yes, here. Yes, sir. Uh, hey, next Wednesday is his birthday, so we might have to what? sing to him on Tuesday. Wait, so he's turning 34? 35. 35. Okay. The man looks 25. Yes, he, he is the most in shape guy I know. <laughs> I love that man to death. Um, he'll be in the house sharing a little bit about his life, his story in Augusta University BCM. So can't wait for that. We got to well, get a cake. Dude, he loves Batman. So y'all have something in common to talk about. Yeah, you. Yeah. Comics and stuff. I'm ignorant too. Well, there's still time. I know. <laughs> It'll be good. It's going to be awesome. We got bro, um, brother David coming in soon and our sister Jamie at some point. Looking forward to all of that action-packed stuff. So, hey, go in peace. Enjoy your week. We'll see you next week. Shabbat shalom. <laughs>